what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be reviewing the latest Android 12 build of Pixel 3 port beta 5 on this particular device and the build date here is 22nd September 2021 so you guys might be thinking that why the build date is different from the previous build which I flashed earlier that particular build had bugs like vault calling, messaging bug, etc. bugs are there. That's why this is the newer build that I flashed completely separately. And of course, you can flash this particular build with the same method shown in that particular video. Now, if you're looking at the change logs and stuff, there are a lot of things. It shows it uses MIUI global encrypted vendor. But I would say this is a little bit weird situation because even after flashing this, my TWRP does not ask for any password. And yes, I did format my data. But still, my TWRP does not ask for password and if I go into install, it shows some blank stuff. So yeah, if you want to flash magic on top of this, you have to use a OTG drive or something like a OTG pen drive to actually flash something in TWRP recovery. So that's how it is. And as you can see, Vault is fixed right now by default and the Google Duo Meet etc. accessing works now, it shows. And there is the WhatsApp camera accessing works, etc. And safety net, it shows passes by default, but it doesn't. You actually have to flash magisk if you want to get safety net working over here. And here it shows uses TR camera. I'm not really sure what that is. And there is some information like GApps are included, of course. And it shows this build is encrypted by default. But again, that issue is there where if I go into the tutorial RP, I cannot see the files. So yes, I have been using this particular ROM for a couple of days now and here is my experience. Well, it is much much better than the other devices because you get 120Hz working super fine over here. Let me actually show you. In this test we have a website, you can see that we are getting 120FPS. So yes, 120Hz all the time is working perfectly fine here. So that is not an issue. Let me go home. Now the one issue that I have been noticing over here is there is no stock camera by default. Otherwise, in the earlier build, there was Google Camera Go, but here I had to install these two cameras separately. There was no stock camera by default here. But let me actually show you, even if you go into this Google Camera Go, well, this is the version one kind of Google Camera Go. But if I take a selfie and right now, if I open this photo, as you can see, this photo is kind of landscape. It does not give you a portrait oriented photo. So yeah, that's what the problem is. Also, the portrait mode here does not work properly. Let me show you. So even though I took a portrait selfie, as you can see, there is no background blur or something. So yes, that's how it is. There is no like portrait bokeh effect appearing. And again, the selfie is in landscape orientation. So this problem is there. Let me go back from here. This is another Google camera that I have installed. Yes, that is working fine. Even we have the front camera and stuff working fine. Let me take a photo. So here, as you can see, front camera is working fine with this particular Google camera, not an issue, but yeah, with Google camera go, those problems appear. And we also have this new search panel. So if you're searching for something, let's assume if you're searching Telegram, as you can see, it shows your contacts, messages, or you can search on Google. Also the app, it shows over here, whatever app you are searching for. And you can't really drag and drop the app in the home screen from here, but what you can do, you can drag from the icons then you can like bring it in the home screen just like this. So yeah, it does work. And the widgets in the home screen are working totally fine as you can see. Also, let me show you some more stuff like let me bring the widgets. Now here, this is how the widget panel looks like. You can add this Google Photos kind of memory over here. Also, if you scroll down and if you scroll down more, this is the clock widget. These are the clock widget I mean that you will get. Now, let me show you these clock widgets are actually working perfectly fine. You can resize them however you want to. As you can see and the seconds of course does move around here and there we can make it smaller if you want to so yeah and it actually like changes the colors depending on the like spot wherever you are putting it so let me show you right now as you can see the minute bar is kind of like red so it totally depends on the wallpaper let me shrink the size of it as you can see right now it's blue and it's matching the background color of this particular position if i bring it right here as you can see it turns red so yeah this is a very cool feature in my opinion and Yes, it definitely looks cool. Whenever you're putting it somewhere else, it will actually adapt to the color of the background of the wallpaper. So that is just great. Of course, we have much more widgets that you can edit and add from here in this clock widget, as you can see, all these clocks that you can add over here. Talking about the stock launcher again, and to the left, we have this Google's Discover page. It does work super fine and has this stretchiness over here. Just notice how smooth the whole experience is. Swiping down again gets you to the quick sync panel. 
and swiping up gets you to the app drawer you can tap here to always show keyboard whenever you are swiping up so if you're like swiping up and searching for something all the time you can do that from right here or else you can just disable the keyboard from right here so yeah that is great again the widgets i showed you so yeah that is not a problem widgets are working totally fine here also the wi-fi and stuff everything is working fine and again the animation looks amazing over here in android 12. talking about the settings panel this is how it looks like of course and if i go down over here we have this about phone section but here also it shows basic for some reason the device name and if i go into the android version of course we have the android 12 version over here and right now if i make it 12 o'clock here we have this kind of like easter egg so yeah this looks cool the android 12's easter egg and the uh, security patch is latest of september 5th 2021 so that is great also the stock kernel version you can see this is the 4.14.180 version and here we have the build number on the bottom in the system panel this is how it looks like we get the gboard by default of course and we have a system updater but not really sure if this will be useful as of now now let me jump into the gestures here we have the swipe fingerprint for notifications and it really does not work as you can see so yeah this feature is for pixels of course and the quickly open camera is there but it doesn't work i have tried it but it doesn't work simply now let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed quickly and here there is no double tap to sleep that's why i'm using the power button to actually lock the device of course there is always on display but i have disabled that you can enable it from the settings then you can go into the display settings in the lock screen we have the always show time and info and from here you can enable the always on display and of course it looks cool as you can see this is how it looks like and if we double tap as you can see it is working flawlessly no issues whatsoever with the double tap to wake actually and here if i tap the fingerprint scanner it unlocks flawlessly and again let me show you one more time and whenever i'm pressing the power button the animation comes around from here but it should have been coming from this side over here but yes this is a port so that's why the animations are like that and yes it does this particular animation as you can see whenever you are pressing the power button looks very cool and again the fingerprint scanner speed is working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever again back into the system and gesture settings we have the navigation gestures here we get the two button three button navigation gesture as well and in the settings we have the left edge right edge customization swipe to invoke assistant is there and that is working fine as you can see okay google as you can see google assistant with voice trigger is working fine let me try one more time okay google as you can see again no issues with the voice trigger of google assistant of course you can swipe it up from the corners too to get the google assistant one handed mode is again there and it does work let me actually show you again okay so yeah right now the one handed mode is working and if you change this to show notification right now if i do this as you can see it actually shows the notification panel whenever i'm using that one handed mode from here so yeah this actually works fine and we also have this one handed mode shortcut so if i tap here as you can see it brings the quick setting or the notification panel from here so that is cool also you can have this full screen into like reach over here so yeah that too works flawlessly now here we have the press and hold power button to actually enable assistant so you can enable that or by default this is set to power menu of course when you press and hold the power button and this is how the power menu looks like you can power off you can restart or you can press the lockdown or you can get to the power menu from here in the quick setting panel too so yeah these options are there blazing fast experience i would say in my opinion this is the best android 12 experience that i am getting also i do not have a sim card over here i am not actually recommending you guys to daily drive with this particular rom because yes there could be issues like in video calls or something i haven't tested the if the camera has that black border or something so yeah those i haven't tested let me actually show you in instagram if i open it right now as you can see yes instagram camera and stuff everything is working fine no issues whatsoever but again i'm not really sure if there will be those black borders on top of the front camera when you are in a video call or something but otherwise the camera works fine here if you are someone who is not really focused in the cameras of the device then you can definitely try it out if you want to right now the vault e-calling and sms both should be working fine this is how the battery settings looks like yes fast charging too is working fine and the battery percentage you can enable from right here and i did that that's why you can see the battery percentage on the status bar and you can see the battery usage by just tapping over here 
as you can see all these apps you can see the full battery usage the battery saver is there also the extreme battery saver and stuff is there and in my frank opinion again this is extremely like smooth experience over here that i'm getting and yes i did not expect it to be this smooth but yes the whole experience of android 12 on the redmi note 10 pro is surprisingly amazingly smooth and here we have the dial pad tone screen locking sound charging vibration etc sound disabling option then if you scroll down we have the display kind of customization and here you also have this smooth display this is for the 120 hertz of course and the double tap to wake and stuff is there the night light is there and you can enable it as you can see night light is working fine also the display size the dark theme etc you can enable and if you enable the dark theme this is how the background looks like of course the background is not completely dark like it's not amulet dark but yes it is quite dark in my opinion but again that background is definitely in android 12 is not completely dark and you cannot really change that as of now i guess in the lock screen we have this always show time and info double tap to check phone and stuff of course wake screen for notification lift to check phone etc options are there show device controls are there that is simply the google home kind of controls also again if you are wondering how is the quick setting panel working well quick setting panel looks like this and you can edit and add multiple toggles over here no issues whatsoever and we have added a couple of toggles already so let me show you what i have added this internet toggle is there the bluetooth and the home controls is there this is for the device control so yeah you can definitely turn it on if you want to just like this here we have the auto rotate then the battery saver the dark theme then the screen recorder is also there we have the device audio and the microphone audio recording at the same time with the screen recorder also we have the do not disturb the data saver and the nearby share and extra dim feature is there and this is how the brightness slider works as you can see of course it does work super fine and the display definitely gets pretty bright over here no issues whatsoever with the display's brightness in the wallpapers and styles this is how it looks like we have all these colors which are getting adapted from the wallpaper that you are using you can use the dark theme from here again and the themed icons are also there and the app grid yes i did change it to 5x5 five by, five. by default i think it's set to some 4x5 or something so yeah you can change these app grid settings from right here and you can change the wallpapers from right here again and we have this default wallpaper and again we have this curated culture wallpaper again then we have some google arts and the voyage etc wallpapers that you will get and this tied wallpapers are there too then you can see what other wallpapers that you will get over here by the way the wallpaper that i'm using currently is from the wallpia yeah. talking about the safety net yes for this i had to install magisk and after flashing magisk i had to use the magisk hide that's how I got the safety net working. Otherwise, right out of the box, the safety net was not working. The DRM info surprisingly still shows as L1. So that means you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime in 1080p on this particular build. And with this LED RGB remote app, I have to set the higher bluster on the device. And that is actually working fine. If you're noticing that light blinking over there. So yeah, that means the higher bluster over here is working flawlessly. Right now, I have opened a lot of apps in the RAM. So that's why I'm going to show you if they stay in memory. First, let's open Chrome and as you can see, it is staying in memory and as you can see, it is running at 120 hertz again and Facebook is yes, still in memory, Files still in memory, Twitter is again in memory, Play Store still is in memory and the YouTube app is again in the RAM and the Instagram too is in the RAM. Again, just notice how smooth it opens all the apps and it is just surprising to see that Android 12 is working this flawlessly on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. As you can see, all the apps are still in memory and whatever widget that you add, if they are this clock widget, does this particular animation. Looks so cool over here whenever I'm going home. And of course, this is a new clock app over here. It has this bigger buttons, of course. And this calculator app, again, looks very cool. And it has this like kind of animation whenever you are swiping down over here. So yeah, this calculator app really looks cool in my personal opinion, as you are noticing. So yeah, all the apps are there in memory and just notice how fast it is while I'm switching between these apps. It is a much, much snappy experience in my frank opinion. Of course, some things are still missing like the three finger screenshot gesture and stuff. Those things are still missing. And here you can get the screenshots from the recent panel. And if you want to put your like apps into the split screen and stuff, you can tap on the apps icon. If they support it, it will appear right here or you can pin a particular app, then go to free form mode or go to apps info from right here. Or you can select some particular text or you can go all the way to the left and clear all the apps from the RAM. And if you're worried about the benchmarks here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test. And with PC Mark, I have tested both the work performance and the battery life test. 
here are the results so yes as you can see the battery life too here will be amazing and i did like put the brightness while doing this pc mark battery life test at like 90 percent so thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this was my full view of the android 12 beta 5 on the redmi note 10 pro please share this video with your friends again if you like this video this is cheetah from kdn tech signing off for today i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye bye now